Hey guys, I'm Rich. I just got out of class about an hour ago, so I decided to go shoot some B-roll for the new 14-inch MacBook Pro. I'm so excited for it. This thing is a beast when it comes to performance, and the new MacBook redesign is really cool. I'm currently heading back to my apartment, so I'm very excited to show you guys this new machine. So, let's take a look. of us has been asking for a MacBook Pro redesign for years and Apple finally listened. Gone is a touch bar which many have disliked, but back are the multimedia keys. Ports like the MagSafe, HDMI, and SD card readers have been re-added, and a whole new display with increased size and resolution. The 16-inch Max felt a little bit too big, and while 14-inch doesn't sound like a major leap from 13-inch that we usually see from these MacBooks, I've got to say, I think this is probably the perfect size for a laptop yet. The screen has finally been upgraded to a 30, 20, by 1964 P resolution screen from the usual 2560 by 1600 P screen that we've seen on the Air and Pros before. Not only is this larger, but it's also very, very sharp. Just as sharp as the Microsoft Surface Book 2 screens, which has some pretty amazing displays. The bezels have been significantly reduced, giving the screen a thinner look, and I like this a lot. The laptop doesn't get any bigger than your MacBook Air, so it's still very, very portable. Now, if you've been living under a rock, that's okay. I'm sure if you heard about that horrendous notch that surrounds the webcam. Yeah, it's certainly noticeable. In my opinion, it's not all that bad. Mac OS Monoway has definitely worked around that. The menu bar adapts to the screen. For example, my mouse runs beneath it as if it's still there. And what's really cool is that other applications will then blend that notch with the entire screen. And when you look at this from normal usage, it's pretty advanced. Even if I get super, super close to the screen, it's like, it's not even there, so good job Apple. As far as the design goes, this machine is a little heavier, weighing in at around 3.5 pounds or 1.58 kilos. And now as a student, the weight is definitely noticeable in my backpack compared to something as light as my MacBook Air. The Pro can be opened up with just one finger too. And while the build is a little bit chunkier than last year's Pro model, I get it that they had to make room for the new M1 chip as well as the extra added fans for cooling. Speaking about fans, there are two cutouts along the bottom sides of the MacBook for airway to escape as well as the back where the hinge is at. I'll talk about the fans a little later. <clears throat> but yeah, it's nice to see uh, the ports finally back on the MacBook, especially the MagSafe SD card readers and the HDMI port. Like these were so essential for creators like me. I'm sure for other students and people, they would appreciate those ports because maybe they want to connect it to their, their desktop screen or a TV. Not sure why Apple decided to ditch the ports. Anyways, the keyboard feels as nice as ever, and I think these feel a little bit deeper than my MacBook Air. It feels really great. It actually feels pretty amazing, actually. I like typing on this a lot. It's very enjoyable, swift, and speedy. You have the Touch ID power button on the top right corner, and overall, the speakers sound great. They're really loud, they're pumping. If you heard how the MacBook Air sounds, I think the MacBook Pro just gets a little bit louder, so it's definitely an enjoyable experience for both your ears. Okay, so let's talk about performance. That's what we're here for, right? I know for the average student, out there, this is pretty overkill. If you're a student that needs to browse the web and do light work on the side, I seriously don't think you need a machine this expensive. Coming in at around two grand for just a base model, I would consider this laptop more of like an investment because the power that's coming out of this machine and the features that you get is impressive and it will stay with you for a very long time. Everything about this laptop so far is the snappiest and quickest I've ever seen on a Mac to date. As a health informatics student, I actually spent a lot of time researching, just browsing the web for information information, a buttload of articles and statistics, and most of these times are all done on Google Chrome, which many have come to realize is a RAM and CPU intense app. Let's not forget that I watch a lot of YouTube videos here on the side and I like to watch them all in like 1440p because I like high quality videos. Just the other day I had up to like 16 to 20 tabs open and then I had Adobe Lightroom running in the back editing some photos. I didn't notice a single slowdown at all, it was just powering through. As for the specs, it's got an 8 core CPU, 6 of which are the performance cores and 2 of them are saved for efficiency, and a 14 core GPU, and that's a lot of cores compared to my 6 core CPU gaming PC. It supports up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory, which again is a lot. I ran a Geekbench test on this. You can see here it's around 1767 for a single core performance, and 9948 for all the cores combined. And Rich, 
what do all these numbers mean? It's fast, bro. If you're a computer science student, graphic designer, video editor, or someone that just needs a super fast machine, then this is what the Pro was made for. As far as video editing goes, I edit on DaVinci Resolve, which quite literally pushes my gaming PC, my M1 MacBook Air to its limits. I edit all 1080p full length videos with a considerable amount of effects, transition, and color grades, and the Pro just eats through it like it's crazy fast. I was able to render all my videos approximately under five minutes compared to my 12 20 minutes on my PC and Mac Air. The Pro rarely runs its fans. Maybe it gets moderately warm under full load. For example, rendering a whole you know, 4K video. And I get it that not everyone and their moms can be editing 4K videos. I would say fan noise on this laptop is virtually non-existent. And I think the biggest improvement experience for me isn't necessarily about the, the fast rendering times, but the fact that it runs cool, quiet, and efficient. I'm still able to use this machine for other things even when I'm rendering or editing a video, but when it comes to maybe the ASUS ROG 14-inch laptop that I previously had or the Surface Laptop 4, its fans start rubbing up really loud. You can feel the heat coming off of it. And then if I try to do something else, like just go on Google to watch a video, it starts to get really hot and unusable. With the Pro, I didn't have a problem. I just kept doing what I was doing. And that is really amazing. Something that my MacBook Air M1 and my gaming PC that's really old may run into a little bit lag spikes here and there. Yeah, so performance was a whole chunk of this video in terms of battery life. How does it go? Well, it lives on very well. It does go for that advertised 14 hours of battery life that Apple does always say. When I edit videos or do intense things, I normally have it plugged in just to give it a little bit more juice, give it that constant power. But I usually use this laptop for two to three days even, and there's still a lot of battery percentage left. But obviously, as you know, lithium ion batteries tend to degrade over time, so I wouldn't be surprised if this laptop battery health significantly drains over like two to three years, but it's still a powerful machine nonetheless. <clears throat> well, that's a lot of talking. I'm a little bit sick filming this video. That's all I have to say about this great and powerful machine. Apple seems to have finally come to their senses and delivered to their customers. This definitely earns a title of the Pro in my book, not the Pro that we got last year. All the ports make sense. The keyboard and design is super, super premium. The notch isn't that bad in my opinion. I don't know why people are making it such a big deal. I really think it's advanced and cool that they did that seamless transition to make the, the top of the screen blend in with the webcam. Like, come on, that's, that's really cool. And the power that's coming out of this, it's out of this world, come on. My only problem is the price. Two grand is a lot of money to be dropping as a college student. I guess if you're an actual pro that actually needs a performance or just got the money, then perhaps the price is easily justifiable for the performance. For most regular people who do simpler things, there are many other options out there for less than two grand. But nonetheless, I still stand alongside the MacBook Pro and what they offer this year. This machine is a step in the right direction for Apple. So yeah, you know, good job Apple, please. Thank you. Keep Doing this. Anyways, my name is Rich. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Go down in the comment section down below. Tell me what you think about this laptop. Are you looking at buying it? What are your thoughts? Come on, talk to me. And for now, that's all I have. And until next video, guys, I will see you then.